It has been a hot minute since we've gotten any Wheel of Time TV show news, but that all changes today. The news is spraying from a fire hose. We have a Comic-Con panel with the main cast, marketing posters, new cast members, a soundtrack release, new filming locations, and an actual clip from the show. Join me as I break it all down and give you all the news and notes from the Wheel of Time TV show from this past week on the weekly Wheel of Time news. Welcome back to another weekly Wheel of Time news video. And man, oh man, do we have a ton of things to cover. It was like a literal dead period there with new information and then a tsunami hit yesterday and today and now we're here. So let's jump right in to the spoiler warning for the video. Today's video will carry a spoiler rating of red with major spoilers running all the way through the second book of the series, The Great Hunt. If you have not read those books, you are likely to be spoiled. You have been warned. So let's kick things off with a new casting location uncovered by our good friends over at WattSeries.com, who always do such amazing sleuthing. According to Watt Series, the Wheel of Time production for season two of the show will be spending time October 4th through November 12th at a castle in the Czech Republic called this because I don't even want to try to butcher that, and I know I would. The castle is a gigantic complex, and the filming will reportedly take place in multiple courtyards, green rooms, a kitchen area, as well as the two main halls of the castle. All of that is to take place over a five day period of filming with like 30 days of prep. Now, while it's unknown what scenes are going to be filmed at the complex, it can be speculated upon based on some of the extras that have been cast for that site. There have been calls for extras that are professional musicians as they put out a call for an Asian extra that plays the violin or viola and a contrabrass flute professionally. Now, additionally, there have been calls for a juggler, acrobats, a puppeteer, Irish band and singer, and a fire juggler. Then there have been recent calls for a slim woman with a nice figure as a nude body double that will be covered in blood. Now, all of those things are quite ominous and they're not necessarily associated with this filming location, but it's also entirely possible. So there's been a lot of speculation that this is the location for Barthany's Manor and the party that they have there, but given that they're gonna be shooting for five days, that seems like quite a while for one party scene. That being said, the castle certainly seems like it would make a great location for the manor. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments of the video what location you think that this will be from the books. All right, let's move on to some posters that Amazon has released for the show. They dropped these in preparation for the Comic-Con panel, and these are going to be the marketing posters that the show will use. There were a couple versions released, and I have to say my general impressions of these aren't great. It's not the formatting, but really if you look at the editing done to the photos, I'm not a fan of it. I'm not sure why they have the contrast cranked up to 100, and I'm really not seeing what they're going for with this. To be clear, I do not hate the design of this conceptually. I'm just not sure of some of the choices they made concerning some of the coloring. They're going for something very much different, and I think that's obvious. It just doesn't look crisp to me. There is certainly a World of Dreams type feeling to this, but I'm not sure where that would be relevant in the current part of the story with the characters at this place in their development. It does appear that they are setting up the Murdral and the Trollocs as the bad guys for the season and not making the focus the Forsaken. And I agree with that choice. I've said this before actually, that they could do that and make the Forsaken more impactful later. I do know some people loved the posters. Let me know what you guys think of them in the comments. If you were one of the people that loved them, let me know what you loved about them and why you loved them. Tell me why I'm wrong. So this next piece of news was a huge deal for me. Early in the day on Friday before the panel started, Rafe Judkins tweeted out a link to the first fully released musical track from the show's soundtrack. Now the composer is Lauren Balf. He's a protege of Hans Zimmer and is an incredible composer in his own right. Now I can't play the track here because of copyright reasons, but I flat out loved it. It is likely not an ambient theme or a character theme that just plays in the background because it does contain words and vocals. So it will likely be used during an episode in a short clip and then used as like the main credit sequence. The song is absolutely masterful though. The lyrics are even in the old tongue, which is freaking amazing. The level of detail they are putting into this is remarkable. And the song absolutely grows on you the more you listen to it. It's actually really, really catchy. In terms of what it's about, it's hard to tell because none of us are really total experts in the old tongue, but the title of the clip, Al Nato, translates to of the or from the flame, and you can make out Aes Sedai in the lyrics, so it implies it'll have something to do with Aes Sedai. Nevertheless, this was confirmed on Twitter by Lorne Balfa himself, 
that this is not the theme for the show, but the sound of the music is very distinct and it's awesome. I can't wait to hear more. I will have the link to the full song in the description of this video. Now, before we get to the panel and the clip, let me thank the video sponsor, Audible.com. Audible has been a long time sponsor of the channel, and it makes sense because they provide audiobooks super cheap, and the Wheel of Time audiobooks are awesome. If you have not experienced Wheel of Time in audiobook, it's an entirely different way to consume the content, and it's a great experience. Kate Redding and Michael Kramer are amazing. The voices they do for all of the characters are very distinct. You can literally tell what character they're doing based on their voice. And even if you don't want to do the Wheel of Time audiobooks, there's such a massive selection of other audiobooks that are great for when you're driving or riding the bus or the train or the subway, if you're cooking, or pretty much doing anything where you can't crack a book open. I pretty much am always listening to some book on Audible one way or the other. If you want to give audiobooks a try, Audible is hooking my listeners up. You can get a free audiobook to try things out and you can keep it regardless of whether you decide to keep the service or not. So you literally have nothing to lose by trying it out. All you have to do is head to www.audibletrial.com forward slash Nablus and get your free book. It is a win-win, so make sure you check it out. Now, Let's get back to the video. So this was the main event and there is so much to talk about here. Most of the main cast members were on the main stage at the New York Comic Con, including Rosamund Pike, Daniel Henney, Yosha Stradowski, Marcus Rutherford, Zoe Robbins, Madeline Madden, and Wheel of Time showrunner Rafe Judkins. The host of the panel, Amy Ratcliffe from Nerdist, did a great job and we learned a lot from this panel. Now, I'm not gonna go through everything that was said or show the clips here, but I will hit the main points and the things that I thought were interesting from the panel. Rafe didn't mention much personally that we didn't already know from his previous comments. He talked about what made the Wheel of Time unique in his eyes. He did mention a character that will die in season three. Now, for the sake of keeping the later book spoiler free, I won't say who I think that character might be, but I'm sure many of you who have read past the first half of the book series will know who that probably is. What I do think is nuts is that they were already having conversations about season three, but that makes sense. They've probably mapped out the entire series, and so they brought some of this stuff up in the writing room. Now, Rosamund had some very interesting things to say on her take on Moraine, which I loved. She talked a good deal about the connection she felt with Moraine and that she's a woman connected to something much larger than herself in the One Power. Rosamund also described her relationship with her warder as something very intimate and a real love for each other, but not in a sexual or romantic way. She thought that was very interesting. Rosamund also really seems to understand Moraine and that you can see why she took the role. She told us that she's never been a fantasy reader, but this was a very different type of acting for her and it's a departure from her previous roles, but she feels like she's just been sucked into the world and specifically these books and the character of Moraine, who she really connects with. That is actually something that Rafe has mentioned before, that that connection Rosamund has with Moraine is really awesome, especially for an actress like Rosamund, who is known for that sort of diving into her roles. Daniel Henney echoed a lot of what Rosamund said about the Warder Bond and how interesting it was for them to explore that dynamic. They both talked about how the bond affected their fighting and that we're gonna be able to see the way they feel each other during their fight scenes and how they complement one another. I'm certainly very excited for that. Yosha, I think, won a lot of people over during the interview. Now, he was sort of nervous at first and pretty quiet, but you could start to see a bit of who he is as a person as he talked more. He takes this role very seriously, and he wanted to understand Rand's character arc. He's also the furthest along of the cast in reading the books as he's currently reading Knife of Dreams, and he had his copy of the book near him during the interview. Now, what was obvious watching Yosha talk about the books was that he gets it. He understands Rand, he clearly loves the story he's reading. He was very earnest and innocent watching him talk about his first time through the books. And he even mentioned that you could probably read the books over and over and over and still get new things out of them, which I think all of us can relate to. I think Marcus also won a bunch of people over. At least the few of you that were worried about his casting, I've said it before, I think he was the perfect casting for Perrin. And listening to Marcus talk actually reinforces that. He's very soft-spoken and careful. He just has Perrin's demeanor in general, which I think is awesome. He referred to himself as a gentle giant and said that his arc in the story will follow him balancing his desire for peace and his animalistic nature, which for book readers is going to be very telling. Zoe also impressed in her interview and she actually answered something that was one of my worries after the trailer. She talked about how epic the sets and the costuming were 
She mentioned the level of detail, like giving her a bag full of herbs for her costume that you won't even see her use. The thing that Zoe answered for me that I thought was so profound was about how she would portray Nynaeve's character. Zoe said that Nynaeve has always been undermined her whole career as a wisdom, and that most of playing Nynaeve on screen is balancing her insecurities with her sense of duty. She mentioned that Nynaeve is a very flawed character, but one that loves the people that she cares about. I really needed to hear that, as I really thought they might lean too far into making Nynaeve kind of a badass, and I think her flaws are what make her arc, in my opinion, and what makes her my favorite character in the series. So hearing Zoe talk about Nynaeve's insecurities has me feeling really good about her with the character. Another thing that Zoe said that I thought was so, so important, and it had to do with her braid. Uh, and yes, all jokes aside about Nynaeve pulling on her braid, Zoe mentioned that it was really great for her to be able to use her natural hair texture in a braid and what that meant for her. Obviously, for me being a bald white man, hair is not something I really worry about a whole lot, but I know all too well from friends and people that I follow that this is unfortunately uncommon in movies and television and that for a long while, people of color were forced to straighten their hair to try to accommodate a different look that isn't theirs. It's something I wouldn't have noticed due to my own privilege and not paying attention to people's hair in general, but I am so grateful that this type of representation is in the story and what that means, and I'm glad Zoe brought it up. Madeline talked about the depth of Egwene's character and the conflict with her mind and her heart in the story. I think this is somewhat foreshadowed in the trailer by showing her and Rand's relationship. She clearly loves Rand, but feels her duty is elsewhere. In general, the panel gave a lot of information about the actors and how they are approaching their characters. I can say that Barney Harris was missed, and not having a talk with the actor playing Matt in the series was kind of a bummer. I would really have loved to have seen Barney in that environment and answering questions about how he portrayed Matt. Probably the biggest and most important thing though that we learned through the panel was that the horse that plays Bella in the series, Archie, farts a lot. Yes, you heard that right. Hashtag Bella farts. So probably the biggest thing to come from the panel actually was the clip from the show. Many had speculated that we would get a trailer, but it appears that that is actually still to come here in the near future. We got an exclusive scene from episode one of the show. Now, I am not going to break it down frame by frame in this video. I will have another video coming out that will be similar to my trailer breakdown video, where I'm gonna go through it all and point out everything. But I will give my general impressions here though. In general, I very much liked the clip. Tonally though, it is very different from the books in the sense of how Moraine is introduced and people's reactions to her. In the clip, they know she's an Aes Sedai, whereas in the books, they discover that after she fights the Trollocs in Channels. To be honest, even though it's different than my headcanon in the books, it's probably a good change there. What I love about this specific clip though is the general vibe. It feels like the Winespring Inn and the apprehension of an outsider coming into the village is felt when Lan enters. Moraine also certainly carries herself like an Aes Sedai, very entitled and very sure of herself and very powerful. Now, one thing that I will absolutely expand upon in my breakdown video is that this clip is very much edited for our viewing. This is not how the shots will play out in the show. It does take a careful eye, but this is not a continuous scene, although it was edited for us to think so. Again, I'll talk more about that in the breakdown video, which will come out tomorrow. The biggest thing I want to address here though, is something that I know a lot of us will be fighting with the show. My initial reaction to the clip was not great. I watched it and just felt like it wasn't the wheel of time. Then as I watched it again and again, I realized where that was coming from. It wasn't a change to the story that had bothered me. I, I knew there would be changes to the story. I was fine with that. It was the tone. We all have our headcanon about how people carry themselves, how areas feel, how certain locations are gonna look. The first time that you see something, especially out of context, that's different from what you had in your head, it is always going to feel different. It's essentially like jumping into cold water. That initial shock is gonna like scare you, you don't wanna do it, but then once you're in, you become accustomed to it and it feels a little more normal. That's what's gonna happen for a lot of us book readers. Even those of us who know changes are coming are gonna feel that. Once we become sucked into the story and into the characters, I think then you can appreciate it for what it is and not what it isn't. Now this is not negative or positive. We know changes are not only coming, but have to happen. You are very likely going to have initial reactions to them, especially as a book reader that probably aren't positive. Let the story suck you in and then judge it on its merits. That's what I'll be doing. And I kind of had to tell myself as I was watching it. The more and more I watch the clip though, the more and more I like the general vibe they are going for and how it all looked. I'm genuinely excited to see the non-edited clip and see how the scenes 
play out in context. I actually think that would make that scene better, but I'll talk about that more in my breakdown video. Anyways, let me know what you thought of the clip in the comments of the video. Did it make you feel better or worse about the show? The last thing to come from the panel was fairly major. Towards the end of the panel, Rafe was asked about season two of the show, which they are currently filming, and he answered by confirming officially that Kira Coveney would be playing Elaine Tricand, and that everyone that has seen her has said she is Elaine. Now, based on the video clips I've seen of her acting and obviously her pictures, I'd have to agree with that. But Rafe did not stop there. He then teased two castings of characters that are very important to the story in his words. He went on to tell us that Natasha O'Keefe and Mira Sayal would be joining the cast, but he did not tell us their roles. So immediately that got the internet speculating. There seems to be universal agreement from most that Mira Sayal will be playing Varen, and I would tend to agree with that just based on her looks, but that's really actually all we have to go on at this point. But it does make sense given that The Great Hunt is being adapted for season two and Varen plays a large role in that story. For Natasha O'Keefe, there is a bit more of a discussion. There seems to be three main camps here. Uh, first, that this is Lanfear. Now this is backed up by rumors that Lanfear has been on set. That's been talked about before. That's completely unsubstantiated, but it's very, very possible. Another thought is, is that this is Elida. Now Elida plays a huge role in the story and they need to introduce her at some point. If Elaine is coming into the story, it does make sense that Elida would as well. The last thought is Fael, which I think is the least likely of the three. While she certainly has the look of Fael, I think she's probably a little too old to play a 16 year old, but then again, they did age up the rest of the characters, so maybe they aged her up. But I also think the timing would be a little odd because season two is gonna cover, I would imagine, mostly the Great Hunt, and Fael really doesn't make an appearance at all in that. So she may come in later in the season, but I just find that to be an odd, casting release right now. Now I think the odds are actually that she is Elida and I do think there actually is a Lanfear casting and I think she is in the show. But given that we haven't had any castings of the other Forsaken, it seems odd to me or a little more fitting I guess that they would be announcing Elida instead of a Forsaken right now. Just my thoughts. What do you all think? Make sure to let me know in the comments of the video. So I know it's been like two weeks, uh, but we have a winner from our weekly contest from two weeks ago. If you remember, it was to win a $20 gift card to shopwheelofTime.com. All you had to do was comment on the video and that you wanted to enter the contest and obviously be subscribed and like the video. This week's winner though is Katherine Hunter. Congrats, Catherine. You will need to message me on Discord or on Twitter to get your so I can get your information to get the gift card out to you. But let's talk about this week's contest. This week's contest will be to win your choice of Aja shirts from shopwheelofTime.com. You can pick any of the seven Ajas or the black. And here's how you enter. I will be putting up a tweet with the link to the store where you can see the shirts. I'm gonna throw that up on Twitter. You must reply to that tweet telling me what Aja you would be. So you need to be following me on Twitter, reply to that tweet telling me what Aja you would be, and then you will get to pick your own Aja shirt and I'll pick a winner. Lastly, I wanted to give you a quick update on the release schedule for the channel. It's always difficult navigating work requirements and time because this stuff is time consuming. So I'm gonna be pushing my weekly news videos to Saturday mornings, which is when I've tended to be getting them out anyway, but that's gonna give me time to get them out easier. Then I will still release another video Sunday evening around 6 p.m. Monday night I will still have the live show so tune in then if you have not already. I have regular guests. We get into talking some good wheel of time stuff. We play some stupid games sometimes. I'm a troll. All of that. It happens regularly. That happens every week at 9 p.m. Eastern time again every Monday. This coming Monday I will be joined by the innkeeper Matt Hatch from the Dusty Wheel and we'll be talking all about the news that's coming out, so make sure to join us then. And lastly, as time permits, I will probably get out bonus videos on Thursdays as I can. Of course, when the show comes out, I'm going to have an entirely different release schedule for that run of the show. I'll be getting videos out on those particular episodes, and that'll be a little different release schedule. I will update all of you on that when the time comes. Make sure to like the video if you liked it and subscribe to the channel. About half of you are not subscribed and you will want to be because there's gonna be tons of content about the show coming out and you don't wanna miss any of it. There will be some exciting news in general coming up here in the next few weeks that I cannot wait to share with all of you. Perhaps an announcement on next week's news show. Tease, tease. If you want to support the channel, the absolute best way to do that would be on Patreon. Speaking of which, I wanted to shout out my newest co nablus on Patreon, Nick Sherman. Nick is a co nablus at that tier, which means that he has some pretty crazy perks. Check out the Patreon to see it all but I wanted to make sure to shout him out. You can find the link to the Patreon in the description of the video. Thank you all for watching, and until next time, which should be very soon, peace out.